In 1989, DNA evidence was used for the first time in Canada in an Edmonton courtroom in a case involving an alleged rapist. The evidence actually ended up clearing the suspect, who was dubbed the Spandex Rapist, although he was later put behind bars on other sex offenses. But in the 25 years since, DNA evidence has come a long way and has helped to both convict and exonerate people accused in many cases, including some very high profile ones. Here to help talk about the use of DNA evidence in courts is Edmonton Crown Prosecutor Avril Ingalls. DNA evidence over the last uh, two and a half decades has become crucial and quite frankly expected in a Canadian courtroom. Uh, it's incredibly valuable evidence because it is quantitative, scientific evidence. And because of that, it's missing so many of the frailties of other kinds of evidence. Courts are reasonably afraid to rely on eyewitness evidence uh, because we know of the frailties of that kind of evidence. DNA evidence, of course, at its heart, is identification evidence. For example, if an offender's DNA profile is found in a deep sample taken from a sex assault response team nurse from a complainant's genital areas, it's very hard to explain that by any other logical conclusion that the sexual act happened. So that sample can prove not only the identity of the alleged attacker, but the fact that the sexual act actually occurred. And it's very difficult evidence to contradict from that perspective you know what you're hearing when you hear that a random match probability between the sample seized at a crime scene and the sample taken from the uh, suspect is one in a billion, you know how reliable that evidence can be. It's valuable to the courts, it's valuable for, for juries, and because of the modern information age and everyday TV shows that people are watching, it's also understandable to everybody who hears the evidence. For Sun News, I'm Tony Blake.